Hello everyone and welcome to Magical Me. I'm Jamie Mendez, spiritual, intuitive, and oracle. And happy July 1st to everybody. I can't even believe that we are already in the month of July. Um, super, super exciting month. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second and what that means to me um, and for all of us as a collective. But I'm just going to uh, wait a few moments before I start talking and before I announce what I'm doing here today or what Moon Day is for anybody new to my page. Um, and I'm just going to start sharing this to let everybody know that I'm live and uh, I'll tune back into the comments in a second. Hi, Courtney and Liz. Hello, Robin. Welcome. Hi, Caitlin. Welcome. Hi, MJ. Welcome. Thank you all for being here today. I hope everybody is having a fantastic moon day. Just sharing, sharing, sharing away. And I apologize about the background noise. You guys know how this works. Being outside and uh, living pretty close to some neighbors, um, you know, I can't always uh, predict what's going to happen. <laughs> so hopefully nothing too crazy. Hi, Beth. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Okay, shared once. <laughs> Share again. And I think that's it. I think I did it. Hi, Laura. Hi, Vanessa. Welcome. <clears throat> Thanks for popping in. How is everybody's moon day going so far? Oh, yes, I'm so glad you did too, Beth. Hi, Bree. Welcome. It is really, really hot out here today, so I'm gonna do my best <laughs> to keep it together. Um, I really wanted to be outside. I feel like I haven't been outside in forever, so um, the pollen is high. So if I start going into um, choking fits or my voice sounds a little raspy, you know why. Uh, so just kind of bear with me. Yeah, I'm so happy that you're all doing well and that you're here. And uh, on, on, you know, regardless of the fact that it is dark moon today, um, the new moon is tomorrow and it's not any new moon. It is a solar eclipse new moon guys. So I'm going to talk about that in a second too. Good for you, Courtney. My day actually started off a little rough. Um, I felt like I had to be in 50 million places at once and I felt like I could not get it together enough to get out of the house. So I kind of started feeling a little like I had these um, sudden feelings of like overwhelm kind of wash over me. Um, and then just feeling like I couldn't get, like I couldn't make it happen. I couldn't get it together. I had to go to the vet this morning with the new puppy. Um, and I just felt like everything that I was trying to do today, I was running behind for something. So I definitely feel like there might have been a theme um, and you know, divine timing, regardless, I know appointments are like, well, you got to be there, but it, it just all worked out the way that it was meant to anyway. Um, but it's interesting because I want to talk about the date today. It is the first of July. July itself is the month of a number seven. Um, to me, sevens represent a leap forward. They also represent, um, to me, it's like, um, transcendence and like, uh, a spiritual awakening or some sort of epiphany and, and awakening moments. Um, I also see seven as like the bridge from one state to the next. So it's definitely about like being a leap forward and elevating forward. They're also about learning something new um, and kind of going from one state to the next, even consciously. So this is going to be a, an incredibly powerful month. Uh, even if I didn't tell you that, we have two eclipses. It is eclipse season. Eclipses are 
basically divine portals that um, bring with them powerful life changing events. So sometimes those eclipses um, facilitate endings and sometimes they facilitate new beginnings. And I was thinking about that very um, phrase this morning. And I was thinking, hmm, so how do we know for an ending and a beginning? And I kind of got this feeling like the new moon was actually bringing about endings, which is interesting because normally new moon's all about new beginnings. But they're kind of the same if you think about it, right? Because something's got to end before something new can begin. So I felt like the new moon eclipse we are experiencing tomorrow was bringing about powerful endings. And then it was preparing us for the new beginnings that are going to be birthed at the time of the full moon eclipse on the, it's a lunar eclipse on the 16th of this month. So uh, that's just my personal take and feelings on it. Um, but they're life changing stuff for sure. So I'm going to take a second and just welcome everybody else popping in. Noreen and Candace, welcome. Happy Moon Day. Beth says her birthday is 7-12. Oh, you know that's a gateway day, right, sweetheart? So 7-12 being a 3 and then 2019 year is a 3. So you've got a 7-3-3. Very powerful days for... Um, I feel like completions of cycles for the birthing of new, uh, but it's almost like a jump forward as well. So really big day. Hi, Lara. Such beautiful flowers in my garden. Oh, thank you so much. The ones behind me look like they need a little water, but if you guys could see all the other ones. They're so, so pretty. Bree says it's my husband's birthday tomorrow. Extra special for him. Ooh, wow. Yeah, that's a big day. And pay attention to the number of the year that he's turning to. So how old he is. Um, like for example, I'm 38 and this year is an 11 year for me. Uh, so, you know, master number 11, big, big year. Uh, but pay attention to that for your husband. So throw that number into the fact that it's a new moon break, new moon eclipse, big, big year for him. Feeling more relaxed, Robin. Good. Good to hear. Oh, good. Yet very emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Vanessa, uh, I'll talk about that too. One second, I just want to get through the rest of the comments. Beth says, it's been brilliant. Love how July is starting. Excited for all the astrological happenings this month. Yes, me too. Courtney says, went to do a, a reading for a beautiful soul. Good for you. Hi, Di. Welcome back from Arizona. Oh, how is the weather over there? I bet it's beautiful. Maybe hot? I have a friend who's out in Arizona right now. Sedona. Okay, I think, I think that's all of them. I don't know if I missed anything else. Uh, my daughter's birthday is 7-9 and mine is 7-21. Wow, guys, big days. Courtney says, your procedure, all in divine timing. There you go. So, all right, um, the emotions that are coming up. So I was doing a little bit of um, reading on this new moon and solar eclipse because, you know, I'm not an astrologer. I, I understand um, and some stuff kind of impacts me in, in ways that make me kind of stop and pay attention. Uh, but for the most part, you know, like everybody else, I look into, oh, okay, so I understand the new moons, the full moons and all that. And that's kind of like breathing for me. But when it comes to what sign is and what and doing what, it gets a little crazy. So I leave that to the pros. But I like to read up about it because I do like to be informed as to what's going on. So um, I was reading about this particular solar eclipse new moon and I actually read that it was bringing up a lot of emotional um, discord and baggage surrounding feeling vulnerable um, codependency issues and I felt like there were a lot of um, basically it's presenting us these emotions and stuff that are coming up in the uh, maybe even situations that are triggering them are coming up to show us where there might still be some karmic or um, energetic cords or wounds that are being asked to be resolved right now. So they're just being presented to you. It was highlighted around codependency. So if you've been feeling like very vulnerable, kind of down on yourself, um, let's see, like alone, you know, like lonely, um, missing something or someone longing for something. It's showing you that these are areas, whatever it is that was that 
specifically targeted for you uh, is where you are allowing some codependency to kick in. Um, so maybe even if you're not with somebody, let's say you're feeling lonely and down on yourself because you're not in a relationship yet and you feel like you should be, um, you know, things happen in, in divine timing when they're meant to. And the biggest relationship that we should all just focus on on a daily basis is the, is the one with ourselves. That doesn't mean that you're not supposed to want to be in a relationship. It just means that the longing, that sadness, that feeling of lack that's coming up, that is being dependent. Like your happiness is dependent upon whether or not you have this. So it's about releasing it and just recognizing that you are where you are for a good reason. And it's self-work, self-healing. And things come along when they are meant to. And most of the time, it's when you're not paying attention. So look to those areas of codependency. It could be money. It could be a job. Um, it could be uh, friendships, you know, feeling like, well, you know, I, you know, my friends are going out and doing things and they didn't invite me. You know, that type of situation could be, again, a codependency upon, you know, feeling like you're not worthy. And it's not realistically or necessarily truth. It could just be a shadow because let's face it, we are also in the shadow phase of not only Mercury, but we are in the shadow phase of the new moon or the moon itself because when the moon goes new, it's void of any light today just before that. And this shadowy phase can be felt a couple of days in advance sometimes. So it's those shadows that are coming up to the surface, and I'm sure you can hear my puppy in the background. I'm sorry. She's a probably barking at her her older brother wanting him to play and he's probably like no <laughs> um so the shadow phase you know it, it, it's it's bringing these shadow emotions up because they need to be acknowledged so definitely why are you you know wait, what are these emotions coming from um you know the vulnerability uh sometimes vulnerability is an amazing thing um not in the sense of feeling like not worthy and uh you know the whole codependency thing but when we are in our most vulnerable state is is really the magic that's needed to like burst our hearts wide open because the point of life is to be open-hearted to just walk through life with that love and loving outlook and that joy and the happiness and in order to get there, you got to break down all the defenses and the walls. And so I like to compare it to when you see those beautiful rainbows in crystals. Everybody wants the rainbows. But do you know that the rainbows are actually, the crystals themselves are damaged. In order for you to be able to see that rainbow, that crystal had to have been broken or dropped and cracked somewhere along the way in order for the light to get in and reflect creating that rainbow prism that you see. So we are at our best when we are fragmented and cracked crystals. And it, how we experience wholeness is through reaching that lowest point and then being able to find happiness and bliss and see that everything is exactly as it's meant to be at this moment in time. And that really allows us to come into oneness and wholeness. So that's, I don't know if that's our reading for the week, but <laughs> I haven't even got to the card yet. But that's what I'm particularly feeling. So do not lose heart this week. Don't, you know, got some big stuff happening. Necessary endings for the birth of new beginnings, guys. So look at that. Look at those feelings. What is, what are you still clinging on to that needs to be released? This is a time of taking stock of what's got to go. Okay. All right. Let me see what I missed here. Hello, beautiful Jeanette and Risa. Welcome. Leanne. Welcome, sweetie. Hi, Julie. Lisa. Hello, lovely ladies. Oh, Bree, 30, huh? Three. So, well, if he's turning 30, this is his three year, okay? Um, so that means he's a number three. But add that in, okay? So it's his year of a three. So the three represents creation, um, the completion of cycles or something coming full circle for the birth of a new cycle and a new chapter. So, and it's the number of 
creation. Very powerful year for him. Let's see, I miss anything else? Oh, the positivity, love it. Let's go, or skeletons, it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> skeletons. Uh, truth bombs too, uh, I've seen that. You know, lots of truth stuff coming up. Robin says, going to North Carolina next week to meet my new granddaughter. Congratulations. Hello, Karen. Welcome for welcome, and thanks for popping in. Yeah, congratulations on that. Oh, Risa, I'm glad to hear that. Lisa says, everything you've said so far has been happening to me. I love your message here. Thank you, sweetie. Well, I'm glad that you're here and you got the confirmation that you needed. Had some past baggage hit and literally worked through some of this. Oh, the aha moments, yep. They happen and they're necessary. Thank you, Leanne. Hi, Tammy. All right, so I did talk a little bit about the energy of uh, the week being that we are in this solar eclipse new moon. Um, we are in Mercury shadow too, so you know, the communication thing that's happening. Um, again, not an astrologist, but I know something. Neptune moved into, was it? Neptune moved into Leo and there's something going on with Mercury and Leo and it's all this crazy like truth communication stuff coming out so it's necessary stuff. Um, so Mercury is doing its job uh, for a necessary reason. <clears throat> Just try to remember compassion in your truth delivering, okay? Because um, that always kind of minimizes the damage a little bit. So Yes, I'm sorry, one second. My uh, Anubis actually has to come out to go to the bathroom. You just gotta, yeah, there you go. Just click his, uh, he probably just wants to see what I'm doing out here. He might think that I'm out here eating. So he just wants to come be nosy. So if you could just hang out for one second and see. Yeah, cause if he's, if he's telling a lie, he's gotta go back, he's telling a lie. I knew it, mommy knows you, you're telling lies. So he might just need to go back in. Oh, nope, maybe he's not. See if he can go to the bathroom really quickly. Good boy. And this way you can just take him right back in because otherwise he's going to get tangled. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, one more moment. Technical. No, who should I? Intermission, maybe? You done? No? Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I will get you. Yep, he's done. <laughs> Good boy. All right, but I don't have any food for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Back in the house. He's going to knock everything. Can you take him? Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Just grab him right there by his collar. Nubis, come on, bud. Oh, you might have to. There you go. Good boy. Go ahead. Go ahead, go. Just go ahead, take him by his collar. There you go. Look at, he's got a treat for you. Sorry, everybody. Real life. <laughs> All right, so um, this month, this week, I actually decided to work with uh, a deck that I don't think I've worked with you guys with before, but I do work with it a lot. Um, I know, Bree, you love this deck as well. It is Rebecca Campbell's Work Your Light Oracle Cards. Okay. So I felt like it was a really, um, it was relevant because, you know, when we've got the shadowy stuff coming in, when we've got the emotional stuff coming in, when we have Mercury retrograde coming in on, I think it is actually the, is it the 12th? I think it's the 12th. Um, it's, it's real easy to lose sight of your light and the light. So I felt like it was a good idea to work with this deck for the first time with all of you and see what comes through. Hi, Lynette. I know, I'm sorry about that. He uh, obviously had to use the bathroom, but he tends to um, try to cause mischief when I'm out here and his cord is so long and he will just knock everything completely over. So that's why I was like, let's just hold on one second. Oh, did you, Courtney? All right, so here we go. So let's see what message comes through. 
for the world as a collective's highest and greatest good this first day of July 2019. Oh my goodness. This is a big card, <laughs> a really big card. So this is Anna, grandmother of Jesus, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. Big, big, big card. So Anna has been, um, she's, she's a figure that not a lot of people know about. Um, I recently have only been hearing and learning more about her through uh, my lovely soul sister, Karen, who does actually um, read up a lot about her. Um, and so she's kind of stepping forward with some um, other key players and ascended masters that are, they're now masters, but those beings who lived in different times that um, we really weren't ready to hear about their um, their purpose or their um their you know who they were and uh she actually played a really big role in the new age that we are all birthing into right now uh and she actually is said to have been um again like again she's jesus's grandmother this is mother mary's mother anna uh, she's actually said to have done some very powerful work that seeded basically planting seeds for this new life and this new golden age that we now find ourselves moving into how many hundreds and hundreds of years later. So she's a really big deal. She's basically, okay, so if we take the fact that she is the grandmother, to me that's like the matriarch energy, okay? So Lynette says what? Mystify seems to be about everywhere today. Mystify, huh? The word itself do you mean, Lynette? Leanne says, oh my God, she is what I chose for my confirmation name back in the day. Oh my God, really? Wow. See? So think about the, the word itself, grandmother, or the energy of a grandmother. And they're very much like the matriarch. Um, the one who has basically started the ancestral line. Um, so this is about plans that you kind of put on, I don't know if I want to say put on hold, but it makes me feel like finally arriving, like these seeds that you planted long ago are finally ready to start to be brought into this new world. So if you think in terms of, you know, uh, the fact even that a grandmother is said to carry the, um, the, the, the eggs or the seeds of her grandchildren in her ovaries. That is wild in itself. And I'm kind of seeing it that way. So those seeds that we have planted either in previous incarnations in this life, um, prior to this life, seeds that we have planted are just now being ready to be born. If you think about the seeds from the ovaries, that are in a grandmother, that child is not ready to be born until that grandmother's child has the child. So look at how you see that being established, if that makes sense to everybody. So it says seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. So that means that everything is occurring in natural divine order. So those things that you wanted maybe 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, maybe three years ago, and they didn't happen, they didn't pan out. It's not that they weren't meant to happen, it's that they weren't ready to happen. That everything has a natural timeline and everything has to move in alignment. There's lessons that we've had to learn, experiences that we've had to go through, relationships that we've had to resolve karma with, all of these things are now coming to an end for the birth to happen. That long awaited birth that you've been waiting for. You might not even have been aware that you've planted these seeds many, many incarnations ago, that you have been doing something very big. So whatever that means for you in your life, however that resonates, know that this is it guys. 
this week, we can begin to see this process start to happen. So again, you've got that new moon energy and you can probably feel that for a couple of days and it will feel a little sluggish. It might even feel like some of you have felt today, amazing. But for some, we might still see the wrapping up of endings that are starting to happen. Know that it is part of a divine plan. Don't resist it. Allow. Go with the flow of the change. Because remember, even though some changes are not expected, some of them are not even wanted. But they're always for our best interests. It's always for our highest good. So in the face of shifting and endings, ask yourself, what am I making room for? What is going to be birthed with this new energy, this new era in my life? And those of you who are riding high right now, you're already ha it's already happening. You can feel it and that's why you feel so amazing. So remember, do not lose sight. And at the same time, when we have a new moon, it's not all doom and gloom. It's usually the opposite. It's usually about the birthing and the planting the new seeds. So those things that you wanted to create or that you want to manifest, grab your journals, start manifesting, create a manifesting wheel if you don't know how to do that <clears throat> or if you already know how to do that. Um, if you don't know how to do it, it doesn't matter. Just grab a notebook, write down on a piece of paper, your goal exactly as you have exactly as if you have achieved it write it down and then start from this point every day writing something that you're grateful for so just release what you wanted to create after having written it down and then every day write something else that you are grateful for and allow yourself to be in a gratitude or an attitude of gratitude every single day and watch how your life just begins to transform because we are prime for this birthing of new energy, this birthing of new ideas, ideals is what I wanted to say, ideals. So remember that. Also, manifesting isn't just about writing down things. It's also about your thoughts, your words. So if you're saying, I'm never going to do this, I'm never going to do that. Well, that's what you're creating. We manifest and create the life that we have put energy into. Okay. So just keep that in mind this week. So great week ahead. Oh, you are so welcome, Jerry. And thank you for being here. Hello, Heather. I just finished up uh, the uh, moon day message, but you can check that back on replay and you can also catch back. I talked a little bit about the energy with these eclipses coming in. Um, it's going to be a big month, no matter what, it's just going to be amazing bombs going off. I think everywhere some some collapsing of bridges and some collapsing of towers but out for the end right we gotta you gotta clear the way somehow you gotta let go of some of the stuff all right Lynna says no zombies please no <laughs> what do you mean like the zombie apocalypse <laughs> no we're <in> manifesting <laughs> you're welcome Robin yeah finally right it really does feel like the light the light is here you know that golden light of resurrection and reassurance it's here okay oh my god a cardinal just whipped right past the back of the tablet so i'm gonna go ahead and say yep that's exactly what it is divine messages coming in right there all right, everybody, so now I'm gonna to get to the next part of the reading, and this is the Mutra. Heather says her birthday month. Oh, we got a lot of birthdays in the house. Wow, that's pretty awesome. What, uh, what day is it, hon? My anniversary is at the end of this month. It's actually the 31st, last day of the month. All right, so. It's one thing for me to talk about the message of the week and what you most need to know, but I love, love, love to give everybody tools to facilitate the changes, the growth, embodying the energy. And I feel like there is no better way to do that than working with mudras. So what are mudras? The 17th, huh? Awesome. That's pretty awesome. I was telling, um, 
Brie about her husband's birthday being tomorrow, uh, pay attention to the number year that you're turning to. And that's not just year this year, that's every year. So like if you're, you know, like I said, I'm 38, so this is my year of an 11. Um, it kind of gives you the tone of what the year is going to be based on, okay? Wow, lots of July birthdays in the house. That's awesome. So we've got lots of, what, cancers? Ooh, deep water signs. And Leo's at the end of the month. All right, so the mudras, what are they? Well, I like to work with a deck to assist me. It's called Mudras for Awakening the Five Elements by Alison DeNicola. So each mudra is actually associated with one or more of your energy centers, also known as your chakras. Mudras are a Sanskrit word for the uh, first, I should say, for it translates to seal. And these seals are actually formed or created with your hands. So by forming different gestures with your hands or your palm chakras, you are able to actually activate your energy centers. So once using these mudras and combining intention, channeling your breathing, it allows you to actually focus energy into those energy centers to remove blockage, to facilitate um, the uh, better flow or constant free flow of your life force pranic energy and it does also allow you to expand in awareness and consciousness so each of your chakras actually rules over four uh, of rules over the four main bodies so each of them have the potential to alleviate blockage on a physical body level on an emotional body level, on your mental body level, and as well as on your spiritual or light body level. So using one mudra can do all this. And some mudras actually work with all of your chakras at once. So they are incredibly powerful. These uh, mudras have been used for thousands of years and they literally act as like buttons or triggers when used. So depending on the mudra that comes forward is the energy that we are working with for the week. It will target a specific chakra or more than one chakra, which is going to facilitate the growth that is necessary for us to be able to embody this energy of the week. It's kind of like a little bit of a, um, a boost or an upgrade and it does help to again alleviate blocks and physical illnesses and not just on your physical body but on your emotional body on the mental body so it helps with those shadows those emotional wounds and things that we've been experiencing and it does help to expand your awareness for eventual illumination okay Courtney says sounds like a caution may pop up with the mudra this week well possible uh, it's possible but you never know. Oh, you're so welcome, Candace. Thank you for being here. All right, so I like to pull a mudra from the deck, and I do ask that it kind of be what we most need according to the message that came through. So then I actually show you the mudra and we do it together. And then I like to take a picture after I'm done doing the live here and post it on my page because it is fantastic way for you to be able to work with it all week long. Just Feel free to save it to your phone, whatever device you're watching on, and try to use it once a day throughout the week. Watch the shifting occur. It's really, really beneficial, okay? All right, so. <clears throat> Let us see. I'm really excited to see what the mudra that uh, comes out, considering it's such a big, big week. Okay. <clears throat> So what mudra comes forward for the world as a collective's highest and greatest good this week of July 1st, 2019, that goes hand in hand with our message for the week. Ooh, oh my God. <laughs> And very interesting, very interesting, because when one thing falls away, another thing is able to kind of come in, and it's all about union and integration as we work with the Kalaka Mudra this week. 
Look at that. And it is a 17. And Heather, you said your birthday was the 17th. So it works out to be number eight, which is the number of infinity, also karma and karmic debt or karmic cycles, strength and courage. It's also the number of career and finance. So everything is coming into divine union this week, natural order, all is falling back into place. So it is obviously the color can give you a little bit of a heads up as to the chakra that we're going to be working with. And we talked all about Mercury. Um, and, uh, you know, that whole truth and illumination, the you know, communication coming out. Um, but it is intimacy is what it assists with connection and balance. It enhances the function of the kidneys, bladder and reproductive system, balances masculine and feminine energies, cultivates a sense of safety and intimacy. The element that it is ruled by is water. So water is all about those deep feels, guys, the sacral chakra as well, dealing with the emotions, possibly bringing balance to that in which we have repressed um, emotion wise and where, you know, those stored emotions as well, because water and emotions, you know, they're hand in hand, but emotions are actually stored in our sacral chakra. And the sacral chakra, like I said, is ruled by water. And uh, it's sacral chakra is also the point of divine union, by the way, because this is where the spark of life occurs through the union of the masculine and the feminine energies. And we have 11 viewers. Look at that. Divine union. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do this together. There is no caution. So yay, everybody gets to do that. And what Courtney was talking about was if a, sometimes the mudras are really, really strong and so potent that they too, they come with a caution. And that means that you might just want to err on the side of caution using them when you have some sort of a physical issue that could be connected to that particular chakra. Like if we've got a solar plexus one come forward, solar plexus rules over your stomach, your digestive system, gastrointestinal. So if you experience any issues there, you might not want to work with that particular solar plexus mudra because it's going to over aggravate those issues you may already have. But this one does not have a caution. So look at that beautiful. I cannot wait to do this. All right. So how you do this is you cross your wrists together with your hands back to back. Okay. I like that. We use that move in belly dancing. I like that. Um, the left hand will be close to your heart center. Hook the little fingers with the tips pointing upward. And I've never done this one before, so it's new to me. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show it to you again. Hook the little fingers, so your pinky fingers, with the tips pointing upward. With each hand, touch the pad of the thumbs to the middle finger and index fingers. Ooh, okay. So left hand is closest to the heart. All right, so that will be in. You're going to link the pinky fingers and then you're going to touch the pads of the thumb. The only one is the ring finger that does not seem to be touching and my fingers are not, <laughs> my hands are really little. <laughs> so I'm trying to show you guys the best I can. Um, Extend the ring fingers upward at a slight angle. Mine does not look as pretty as the card. All right, so then you're just going to relax your shoulders, kind of keep it out in front of your heart center here. Perfect point of divine union. So it looks like we're working with many chakras, not just one there. All right, so I'm gonna have you close your eyes, straighten your back and drop your shoulders. Take a nice deep breath in. and release blowing the breath out of your mouth channeling the energy into your hands and your heart center there go ahead and take another nice deep breath in and release Last time, nice deep breath in.
and release. And you can state, I allow a greater bond and connection with all to emerge. I allow a greater bond and connection with all to emerge. I allow a greater bond and connection with all to emerge. And so it is. And you can open your eyes. Hello, Rosa Maria. Welcome and thank you for being here, sweetie. You popped in just in time for us to be doing the mudra, but you know that you can catch everything back on replay. And so I hope that you all did enjoy um, the mudra as well as the oracle message for the week. I'm definitely going to continue to work with that one. I wanted to bring the Tinsha bells for all of you, so I didn't get to do it, but I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to work with it every day this week, and I do hope that all of you do as well. Remember, it will be posted as a picture on my page right after this. And I did not discuss any news and announcements um, because there really are not any. Uh, most of you know that I'm actually going to be leaving in two weeks. So we've kind of shut oracles down for the month um, and possibly towards the end of to, until the end of the summer, but we will still be taking clients. Uh, we will still be taking readings. We will still be taking healing sessions. Um, we'll be doing that after we return, but I'm actually going away with um, a group of soul family and my partner, Karen, once again, and we are going to Glastonbury, England on a spiritual journey and pilgrimage. So, um, uh, next Monday will be my last moon day for the month of July, and then I will pick it up back again once I return. Internet over there is always very difficult because I would so love to be live with all of you while over there in some of those magical and divine places, um, but it's a very difficult uh, thing to be able to use the internet when we're out there on location and in some very remote territories in the country. Um, so yeah, so if I can, I absolutely will share some of the journey with all of you because why not? It's amazing and I, and I wish that everybody could experience it. Um, so we don't have a whole lot going on, but for those of you who are interested in walking the spiral path of the sacred feminine, check out the events on my page. I am opening registration to my online goddess temple, or um, I refer to it as the spiral temple. It is an online sacred feminine mystery school where we learn together for about 10 months. Um, for the first level and then there are um, two levels at this time so I'm opening that back up for registration for the month of September is when it will kick off once again so if you're interested check out the event it will link you to all of the information to my website and everything so you can learn more and something to think about over the summer if it might be a journey that you feel called to do Love and magical blessings to everybody this week. I hope that your week is as phenomenal as it sounds. Love and blessings. Thank you for your support and thank you for being here always. Have a great day. Bye-bye.